Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video and first of all, before we get started, I want to say if you are using any type of third-party accessories with the Nintendo Switch, I'm not talking just docks, I'm talking about chargers, anything that's third-party and not made by Nintendo, I highly suggest you stop using them as soon as possible and only use Nintendo made accessories and products for the Nintendo Switch. So with that in mind, let's get started. So as we know, there has been reports of the Nintendo Switch bricking lately after the 5.0.0 update from Nintendo with third-party docks. Now, there was some concern of this happening earlier in 2017 as well with some of those docks uh, apparently causing the systems to brick. Now, it has gone widely unexplained as to why this is exactly happening until now. I think we do have a very good explanation of why this is happening with the Nintendo Switch. And this was actually discovered way back in May 2017 where some tests were done by a user who posted all the information on Google. And this user goes by the name of Nathan K. He did a USB-C analysis detailed write-up on Google with all kinds of different errors that he found with the Switch and various USB-C power compliant issues with the system and the dock with both connections on the USB port on the tablet and the dock. Non-compliant, right? Okay, so keep that in mind when we go over this. Now, so the main issues we need to be concerned about are the power levels of the system in volts. What it takes in, what it puts out, and how the system measures the volts in order to power the system up, and how to power the system down. And how it transfers that in between the dock, basically. And I'm gonna leave the link in the description for everyone to look at for yourself in detail. It's very long, a very long write-up. We're not going to have time in this video to go over absolutely everything, just the very important pieces. So what this user discovered on the Switch side of the Nintendo made dock was that the dock tells the Switch it is dual roll power capable on the internal port, meaning it is claiming the Switch tablet can theoretically power the dock itself backwards. And he says, I don't know if this is a future plan add-on for the Switch or not. And then another mode in the alternate mode, the adapter product descriptor, claims it does not need VBUS to operate. And if you don't know what VBUS is, it is basically part of the USB port that carries the 5 volt supply to the system. And it points out that these two points are contradictory to each other. One saying it does need the power, one saying it does not need the power. And then it goes on to say that the dock neuters the USB PD advertisements from the AC adapter. It only passes through the 5 volts and the 15 volt levels. He says this just seems like poor future planning, especially since the switch itself can accept multiple input voltages. Also, this means the dock pass through on the USB-C port is not power rules compliant. So that's not good. And then he goes on to say in more detail that the voltage pass through is too high for the system. It should be at 2.6 amps and yet it goes all the way up to 3.0 amps from the adapter. And now on to the Switch tablet itself. He says that it also has the excess capacitance on VBUS and VSAFE 0V time problem that the dock has. Now if you don't know what that means, the capacitance is how much of electrical charge that the system can store. And it's saying that it has more of it, like more than what it needs. And the VSAFE 0V, basically the best way I can explain it is, is that the system thinks that the device is off. So VSAFE 0V, the system thinks that it's in a power down state and basically if VSAFE 0V is not working correctly and there is actually voltage still left in the system, when you turn the system on with an external device, say a dock for example, and the system thinks it needs to provide the full power for it to turn itself on, it's going to be too much for the device and the system basically would be fried at that point and you have a bricked Nintendo Switch. And the post brings out that it can take up to two minutes for the Switch to naturally discharge from VBUS. So that five volts to fully discharge takes two minutes. So if there's any current still left over in there and you try to turn the Switch back on with another dock, for example, that has the correct power requirements that are different from the Nintendo Switch base model from Nintendo, you have the risk of frying your system. Now obviously, some of these docks that are released already by third parties have been just fine, they work correctly, but there is that chance that the more you use them, that extra electrical current that goes to your Switch could brick your system. And this goes for charging devices as well. Because obviously you assume that for the most part, these third-party docks and accessories and chargers and what have you, they all meet the power requirements of the standards of today. It turns out that the Nintendo Switch and its dock does not meet those power requirements. So you could call this a design flaw for the USB-C port. 
and I really don't think that this was meant to be for the Nintendo Switch and I do expect them to fix this and make a revision for the system as we've been talking about as soon as possible because obviously Nintendo is not going to say hey you know don't use any of those other adapters with your with your Nintendo Switch or it could brick it because we made the system incorrectly they're not going to say that obviously they're just going to replace the system with a new chip and reformat it and make it power compliant correctly and at the end of the post he has a statement here to Nintendo basically or in general to the consumer he says that hopefully Nintendo takes this post seriously and addresses these issues before ramping up production. This was way back in May 2017, per their recent notice. Some of these issues are chipset and hardware level, meaning they can only be fixed via a hardware revision, ASAP. And he says it's really, really hard to fix a problem after you ship the product. Given the recent notice, it seems it may muddy the waters of the USB-C ecosystem quite severely if left unchecked. And once again, I'm just a freelance volunteer engineer doing this testing. Dedicated teams should be the ones to look at this and implement it correctly. So there you have it. There are a lot of issues and if you go and take a look at this post, there are quite a bit of different errors going on here that should be concerning to the consumer and to Nintendo. And obviously, hopefully they are going to be releasing that revised Nintendo Switch very soon. So again, as I said at the start of the video, if you're using any third-party accessories for your Nintendo Switch, please stop me immediately. Only use Nintendo-made products with your Nintendo Switch until Nintendo fixes it. Alright guys, so if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to you guys very soon in the next video. Have a great day.